hello everyone welcome to finance with medicine in this video we're going to look at uh, how to calculate the internal rate of return better abbreviated as IRR so the internal rate of return is simply that rate that gives us zero net present value so it's in other words it's simply an extension of the net present value but in this case we are looking for the rate or the cost of capital that it gives us zero net present value so i've decided to use uh, the same question that i used in the calculations of the net present value video so that we follow closely the relationship which exists there so in the previous video of um, the npv uh, when we carried out the calculations we had found that the net present value was a positive one which was eight thousand four hundred and thirty dollars so in the case of the internal rate of return we are simply looking at the rate that should give us zero net present value not a one not a negative but zero net present value so in order for us to find that rate we usually carry out the trial and error approach so uh, the first step is um, we have to understand the relationship which exists between uh, the discounting rate or the cost of capital or the required rate of return and the net present value so if you find the NPV or the net present value which is positive in order for us to reduce this number to zero we have to increase the interest factor here that's the relationship which is there so increasing the interest factor will lead to a reduction in the net present value and then in the case where this figure was a negative since our aim is to find zero net present value then in that particular instance we were supposed to reduce the rate of return but because in our question we have the positive NPV so we have to keep increasing the interest factor here until we get the, the, the one which is closest to zero or the first negative or any negative value then after we find the negative value then we do the interpolation then that easy that's how we find the internal rate of return so let's begin the trial and error uh, approach so we will try uh, to use a higher range because at 14 percent we got uh, a positive uh, NPV so I will try using uh, 20 percent it's a trial and error so let's try 20 percent we see what net present value we get so uh, if I decide to use 20%, um, I still get the positive net present value. So the same technique that we used in computing the net present value is the, the, the very same which I've used even here. So we realize that increasing the rate to 20%, it has led to the reduction of the net present value. But our aim is to ensure that we get a zero net present value. But in most cases, that cannot be achieved so we have to find the negative NPV first then after that we can do the interpolation so what me, what it means is we have to increase this rate so it's a tedious process so what I'll do is I'll try to increase the margin instead of me uh, increasing it to 21 22 23 so I will try to use uh, let me try 27 and see the net present value that I get so uh, we are trying 27% this time around. So the same interest factor in year number zero, we still get a one. Then when we do multiply here, we get negative 31,000. Then in year number two, the interest factor that we get at 27% is 0 0.7874. 0 0.7874. So then when we multiply this with 10,000, we get 7,874. And then in year number two, the interest factor that we get is uh, 0 0.6200. 0 
0.6200. Then when we multiply with a 20,000, what we get is 12,400. 12,400. And then we go to the third one. So um, at this rate, the third one gives us 4,882 and up to the last we can do the same, which gives us the present value of 1,514. So when we sum all this, it gives us the net present value of negative 486. So we just put it in brackets to indicate that it's negative, which is 486. So what it means is our the rate that will give us a zero, it lies in between 27% uh, and um, the rate that we just tried, which was 20%. So in between 27% and 20%, or may I simply say in between the original rate, which is 14% and 27%. But how do we find that rate that will give us the zero NPV? So we have to do the linear interpolation here in order for us to find that rate. So internal rate of return, we have to interpolate. So by interpolating, we get this formula here. So we have rate one. So rate one is that rate which is given in the question. So in this case, the cost of capital, which is 14%. Then we have to add, so we can put it in brackets, uh, the first NPV. So the, ne the net present value that we got at 14% at rate one, we call it NPV one which will divide with NPV1, the same NPV1, minus the negative NPV that we've gotten, so we call it NPV2. Then when we find that, then we will multiply with it. the second rate. So the rate that has given us the negative NPV, we call it rate 2, which we subtract rate 1. So rate 1, what we had, we had in the initial question, so in this case we had 14%, which we'll add to. So the first NPV that we had gotten was 8,430. So we have 8,430, which we divide with. So here is where a trick is. So the first NPV is positive. So we write it the way it is, which is 8,430 minus. So this is a negative NPV. So it will be minus minus so meaning here it becomes the addition take note of this so we are adding to 486 so we have 486 which we'll add to that then after that we can put this in brackets then again another trick is on these rates so the second rate that has given us the npv in this instance is 27 percent so we don't convert the rate we just write the way it is so we have 27 minus the initial rate in the question which is 14 like that then when we do the mathematics here after you divide we are going to have 14 percent plus so after dividing this we have 0 0.9455 0 0.9455 and then when we subtract 27 less 14, we're, again, we're, we're going to get 13. So, doing the multiplication here, we have 14. We just bring it down, plus it. Uh, when we multiply these two, we have 12.2915. 12.2915. Then, when we add this and this, that gives us our internal rate of return, which is 26. Point Two, nine. So rounding it off to two decimal places, remember the internal rate of return is in percentage. So it's this rate that we are looking for, that when we use it to find the net present value, we're going to get the net present value of zero. And then another thing is, once you find the internal rate of return, now you have to make a decision. Should we accept this investment or not? So the decision rule for the internal rate of return is that you accept the project if the internal rate of return is higher than the cost of capital or the required rate of return. So in this case, 26.29% is greater than the 14%, which is the cost of capital to the, of the, the project. Then what it means is at this rate, it's profitable because it's exceeding the cost of capital uh, to, 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 to an organization. 
So this is how we calculate the internal rate of return. For further questions, we will refer to